In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about seven tips related to how to run more effective and better Zoom breakout rooms. Hey guys, this is Faye from Faye's World Media. Thank you so much for watching this video. Now, there are a lot of tutorials floating on YouTube right now. You probably have watched a bunch of them already on the feature. So I'm not gonna waste your time to talk about how to click here, how to do that. First, I'm gonna confirm the features that truly do exist that will help with your Zoom breakout experience. Number one, yes, you can automatically or manually assign participants. Number two, this is really interesting and important, is that you can pre-create and pre-assign Zoom rooms as soon as you create the meetings from within Zoom. And all this is best done via the web portal, meaning go to zoom.us and log into your account. Now, number three, this is also an important feature. I've witnessed a lot of really large meetings. We're talking 50 people, 100 people or more. Now, those meetings especially need to have breakout rooms if it's part of their agenda. And it's a lot of work trying to um, manually assign members and whatnot. We're trying to create the breakout rooms right on the spot. So the good news is Zoom now has a pre-upload CSV, meaning that they're gonna give you a template, which I'll include a link below, and you can upload all the participants and names and emails if you choose to ahead of the meeting. And you can pre-assign them to different rooms. All these operational things are already done by the time you start the meeting. And trust me, it saves you a lot of time. This video is sponsored by Restream. Restream allows you to be everywhere and stream your content right on 30 plus social media platforms. Thank you guys for watching and let's go back to today's video. With that said, I haven't really witnessed a lot of best practice videos to talk about the effectiveness or how interesting is it really necessary to run breakout rooms or when you should do that. And that's precisely what this video is about. Number one, when do you actually need breakout rooms? It's kind of simple. When you have a meeting that's large enough. So sometimes that might mean 10 people or more. With 10 people in the meeting, you could have two to three breakout rooms. I've been in large meetings with 50 people or more, and I get dropped into these three to four person rooms, and I get to know everybody so much better. So when you have a really large meeting, that works. And also, if you're like me who runs these bi-weekly masterminds with just eight to 10 people, sometimes you notice when you have people who are more talkative, more expressive, opinionated, sometimes they tend to take over the meeting. Therefore, in order to hear from more people and try to create a more intimate environment, it is better to have breakout rooms. If Tip number two, you really need to have clear agenda. Okay, this is so important. How many times, if you have been in breakout rooms, you notice that people are really puzzled. They come in thinking that they know what the agenda is, but the moment they get in there with just three to four people, everybody has a different opinion of what they're supposed to talk about or otherwise it's a lot of confusion. Now, prior to the breakout room experience, it's important for you as the host or co-host to lay the groundwork, to set very clear expectations. Literally what it means is, here's how much time we have, and here are the things uh, of what you're supposed to do. Uh, are we gonna take turns? How much time does each person need? Who's keeping track of the time? So to set clear agenda, it's best for you to draw the actual agenda time, including start and stop time, right into the chat area. So people have it pinned and they know what's going on because once people are dropped into the breakout room, they still have access to the chat. Alternatively, if you want to create something beautiful, you can use Google Doc um, or a document you can drop into chat and invite people to open it up, have it along their side as part of the breakout room experience. Another alternative I really love and I have done so successfully with my breakout rooms is I will use Canva, an online design tool designed for non-designers. I will create a white or a black background with agenda pinned right behind me as part of my virtual background. And I will just slide myself a little bit to the side so everybody can still see me, but they can see the agenda right behind me as well. Now, that leads to tip number three. I talked about time. Time is everything. The whole point of a breakout room is the three to four to five people get to speak. You get to hear from everyone. And keeping track of time is crucial. 
Now, Phase World has developed these digital timers as virtual backgrounds for you to use right away. They only cost $2 a piece, so you can find it for your breakout rooms, your sessions that are two, three, four, five minutes, and somebody even asked me to create these 90-minute timers, but you get my point. Uh, I sell most of these shorter timers for sure, specifically designed for breakout rooms as well as your uh, main room experience. So check them out. Link in description. What are some of the tips that you used in the past that was really helpful? I'm sure I've left out a lot of ideas, so I would love to gather that. Please list them below. Who knows? Uh, if I see enough feedback from you guys, I might just create another video thanking you and incorporating your idea into my many more tips for Zoom breakout rooms. Tip number four, you want to assign people quickly. Now, I'm not gonna blame you as a host or co-host. It's your first time using breakout rooms. It can be a little bit daunting and very panicky uh, when you don't know the people well, you're trying to assign them quickly. I would say that um, pre-assign works so well, especially if you know the attendees well. Uh, if not, if the whole point is for people to mingle and to meet people they haven't met before or get to know each other, do trust the Zoom auto assign feature. Worst case scenario, if you find people who are maybe couples or know each other really well, they happen to get dropped into the same breakout room, they want to break apart, you can always fine tune that or tweak that later because Zoom will give you the option to take people out of a breakout room and add another person in. But trust the auto assign, you really don't want to spend a whole lot of time assigning people to breakout rooms and that will take up the meeting time and you're going to lose engagement and interests. Tip number five, really take advantage of Zoom's pre-assign feature. Now, I'm gonna show you real quick how to do that. Number one, you need to enable your breakout room. Then you need to check the setting to allow hosts to pre-assign participants. As a host, if you do not see the setting to allow you to create breakout rooms within Zoom, what you need to do is go to account management, then go to account settings. On this page, what I notice is Zoom has all these options. What I always do is basically uh, command, find, and I'm trying to search for the element I'm looking for. So in this case, I want to search for breakout room. You need to turn on breakout room. And what I also like to do is check this checkbox, allow host to assign participants to breakout room when scheduling and make sure you hit safe and your setting has been saved. Now, the reason why I say that is when I schedule a new meeting, I'm going to call it test two. Now what happens is as you're scheduling a meeting, you can actually pre-assign participants to breakout rooms using the web portal. So directly from zoom.us. This is the official instructions offered by Zoom. And as you're scheduling the meeting, now you have the option to check breakout room pre-assign. And here you can create as many rooms as you need to. You can also import from CSV. So you can import names of participants and their emails, whatever the CSV form that you have and pre-assign all these group participants. Now, this is a really interesting feature. Even if you have eight to 10 people, I personally find that as a host, if I have a particular agenda in mind, and especially if I already know who I want to assign into which room, this will save me a ton of time. In fact, if this is the first time for you to run a breakout room within Zoom, then it's much easier to try to pre-assign because once you get there, even if you have lingering participants or new people that you didn't quite expect, you can then drop them into rooms. And But this feature alone is going to just save you the panic while you're standing there trying to figure out who to drop into which room and it'll save time from your meeting as well. Tip number six, you need to know when not to use breakout rooms. I'm not saying you need to avoid it all together, but perhaps it doesn't need to be of every single meeting's agenda, right? Sometimes you just want to kind of spice things up, change things around. Um, and that leads to tip number seven, which is you want to ask for feedback. If you're like me, who's been hosting Zoom meetings for a while, when was the last time for you to engage with your audience and say, hey, what are some of the feedback you would like to give me? And you probably get a whole bunch of feedback and people asking you to do things that are not not even possible, technically speaking, from Zoom or things you can't really avoid otherwise. But you might just discover some of the things that are really interesting. People in my uh, mastermind thought that if we have fewer than seven people in that meeting, breakouts are not necessary. They really liked and thought it was very important to hear from everybody. And they felt like there were less 
left out if we're discussing something with just six, seven people and they can't even hear the other side. Um, so I took that advice and when we have a small meeting, I just avoid breakout rooms altogether. However, when we have larger meetings, I notice with say 10 people, but especially 12 people or more, then it's a little bit more work. And I know that 12 sounds like a lot, but I'm also very familiar with my creative group. So I know sort of when's going to speak about what, and I have a better control over that. But if you're just running a meeting with students, with the younger people um, who are still very new to this, who need a lot of moderation, then it's really important to know when to break them up and when to bring them back in. I hope you find this video helpful. Um, just seven tips. This is Faye from Faye's World Media. I so appreciate you for being here. My audience, you guys, mean so much to me, mean everything to me. And I hope you will stick around in 2021 because this channel is all about creative entrepreneurs, regardless of you're an author, a content creator, YouTuber, or podcaster. I want to show you how to create your own platform. You don't have to rely or count on anybody or anyone, including YouTuber, Facebook, or Twitter, because their algorithms will change. Building a platform is a beginning. And building your brand on top of that means you have to understand the ecosystem, the email marketing, building your website, getting the right message out there. So I'm so excited about all the content I'll be bringing to you. And I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye for now.